Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. And democracy is at war, in action, with swift and mighty weapons. The men and machines who hold democracy's line against hunger are fighting too on every acre in America. Mobilized in the greatest farm production effort in the world's history, America's farmers fight on their farms. With two years of the greatest farm production in history back of them, they set their marks for still greater production in 1942. When the commander-in-chief said, it must be done, they pledged with him, it will be done. This is a battle the American farmer knows, the battle of production. And this is a battlefield he knows, the furrows of his own field. His part is to make the meat and milk that put the muscles on democracy for the job of sweeping the world clean of Hitlerism. Democracy in action? Here's a picture of it. A continent wide and strong with the strength of 30 million people on the land. They fight an organized campaign too. A campaign which started with reserves of fiber and of grains for food and feed stored and ready in an ever normal granary. A campaign in which the needs of America and our allies have been calculated and production goals set to meet those needs. A campaign in which every farm has volunteered to do its best part. Men, machines, and land. This is an army that can grow the wheat for a loaf a mile square and more than a hundred feet high. Men, machines, and land. This is an army that can stuff to bursting our granaries and warehouses, the munition dumps of food for democracy. This is an army that every year plants a mile wide belt of corn six times around the world. This is an army that can grow the cotton to make the shirts to hang on a clothesline 134 times around the earth. That's what we could do. But all of us know it's what we do and not what we could do that will finally beat the Axis. Yes, there's almost no limit to what we can do and what we will do. But the doing of it will take a powerful lot of sweat, a powerful lot of planning and working together, too. It's working together that makes the people strong. It's working together that's democracy in action. How do farmers stand on that? Well, mister, working together is part of the farmer's plan, too. If it's more of one thing we need and less of something else, like wheat, for instance, we talk it over. We get the facts and talk it over, whether each man should hold back his share and use the land for what we need more. Then we put it to a vote, town meeting style, the fair way that gives every man his say-so. One man, one vote, big or little, it's the man that counts here. One man, one vote, it's the good of most of us that counts here. One man, one vote, and we'll all go the way most of us decide. 
We've done it in cotton. We've done it in tobacco. We've done it in wheat. We can do it again when we need to. That's democracy in action, mister. And when the storm of total war rolls up against democracy, both in the East and in the West, the men and women who want to go on having their say-so don't run and hide. No, sir, mister. We didn't get these farms that way. You give us an even Stephen break on our living. We'll take a chance on the season. You just tell us what you need and we'll get in gear and go. We'll make the machinery go around to the job. We can find the muscle, I guess. We've got the know-how. We know how to fight the pests. We know how to keep the land strong with lime and fertilizer. We know how to make the land stay put when it comes a gully washer. You just let us know what it takes to beat Hitler so we can keep our right to have a say-so. Well now, there's soybeans and peanuts and flax besides the cotton seed for oil. Eighteen and a half million acres of soybeans, peanuts and flax besides the cotton seed. Oil for soap and paint to win a war. And eggs. There's iron in eggs. And we'll need iron to do this job. Four and a quarter billion dozen eggs. An egg a day to keep the axis away. Mother usually takes care of the chickens. I reckon you can count on her to keep them laying. Milk, too. Milk for American kids and British kids and other kids. Milk for fighters, milk for working men. Milk in cheese, milk in cans, milk dried into powder. Give us a lot of milk. Fourteen and a half billion gallons of milk, enough to float the United States Navy. Another pint a day from every cow will get us up there. We'll feed them better and strip them longer. Meat, more meat. Meat to put muscle on fighting men and working men. Meat, eh? Forks the quickest. Eighty-three million hogs come into market this year for hams and bacon and lard. We'll give you lots of beef, too, and lamb. And, of course, vegetables to go with all that. Well, that's in Mom's department, too. You can count on her and the girls to take care of that here at home. Yes, but a lot of folks live out of cans. 130 million folks in this country, hungry three times a day. Lots of folks in other countries fighting with us to lick the axes. They sort of look to our pantry to keep them going. We'll need a lot of vegetables for them. Okay, more potatoes, tomatoes, beans, and peas. We'll set the mark up near 11 million acres of that stuff to eat fresh and dry and canned. We can keep them rolling. Say, where's all this food going? Well, like I said, there's others fighting with us in the east and in the west. And the eagle flies on lend-lease food wherever our allies need it. Cheese and meat and canned stuff have to go in ships around the world, the same as planes and tanks and guns. It takes men with grit and muscle to keep them flying and rolling and shooting. What does it take to feed a soldier? Well, the army says he'll eat about 400 pounds of meat a year, and he needs 24 gallons of milk, and about 250 pounds of vegetables, besides the bread and other stuff. In this kind of a war, it takes 18 men behind the man behind the gun. Some of those are farmers, and some of them make planes. Some of them make ships to carry the planes and the food. A full dinner pail will drive a lot of rivets. One soldier, 18 men making his fighting tools, mining the iron, making the steel, building the ships, forging the guns, raising the food to feed the soldier and the 18. Big job. A big job, big enough for everybody on the farm. Not too big for big people, not too big for the sake of the big things we're fighting for. A peaceful world. People who are free to think and speak and worship. People who can look at you with no fear in their eyes. It took big people doing a lot of working and a lot of fighting to build a world where kids can go from free homes to free schools and learn how free people working together have put democracy into action. 
It must be done. It will be done.